Hello, Inklings with Irina, connecting you to your intuitive guidance system. And today I want to talk about what do you do when life comes undone? What do you do next? When the rug gets pulled out from underneath you, when your biggest client lets you go, when you're uncertain about what's happening at work, you have unexpected news about the health and well-being of family members, or maybe even yourself. What do you do? How do you navigate through those waters? So what I'm sharing with you today is what I've been using myself because I've been there. I continue to experience that just because we do these spiritual practices and we work towards reaching to higher levels of, of living. Let's just say it that for lack of going into the common vernacular of raising frequency or vibration. That's great. But you know, when your heart is hurting and you're in pain and you're going through one of those dark nights of the soul, it's challenging. So, and empaths have been there. And I want to share with you what I do when I encounter those moments in time and what my clients do as well. So the special energy recipe I've put together for you today is a time-tested one, one I've used myself and one my clients have used. And by the way, if we haven't met yet, my name is Irina Miller and I'm an energy alchemist and a spiritual life guide. And it is my calling to connect empathic curious seekers like yourself to the sacred practices and tools that connect you to hope that help you stay anchored into potential and possibility when the rug gets pulled out. So let's dive into this. I call it the four P's or pause on the panic because when things seem to go to hell in a handbasket, our mind races. The insomnia kicks in, the anxiety, the worries, we're not sleeping. The mind is constantly racing, looking, looking for a solution, you know, and it's it's just like a wind up toy that's gone crazy or one of these little Roombas. Um, myself, the way I described it, because I felt it this week, was I felt like a short circuited robot that just kept running into wall after wall after wall, banging my head against the wall. And it's always interesting because it's nice for people to give us quick little formulas, but know that as we go through these recipes or formulas, it's not always black and white or cut and dry, but it is an engagement. Think of it like a dance. We take a step forward, we take a step back, we twirl around, we dip, we come up. But this really helped me this week and this is what I shared with my clients. And the four Ps, the first one is pause. Now, when I say pause, I don't mean that you have to sit still in a dark room and go humana humana in a meditative pose. Actually, I would encourage you to move in the pause, go for a quiet walk, take a shower. And around this video, there's a link to a very special guided energy meditation, a healing meditation that is the first thing I share with my clients and students, which helps you with the pause. It helps you release the energy that's not yours. It's all that excess because like the fried robot hitting their head against the wall, what ends up happening is we have all this static electricity or charge that's built up we feel fried. So we want to be able to release that so you can get your head on straight essentially. So in the pause, what you're doing is you're allowing your mind to relax. I like to do movement for that quiet walk outside or maybe the shower. But in that experience, you're breathing, you're focusing on the exhale and then allowing the inhale to come naturally. And what that does, especially if you use a special breathing practice where you make the length of the inhale and the exhale even, you can really lower your blood pressure, you can lower those cortisol levels, and you can see more clearly. All of a sudden things don't seem quite as intense. Still intense, yes, but it gives you a pathway to move forward, it gives you hope. Then the second part of this is pray. You can call it whatever you want, affirmations, intention setting, but when it gets down to it, pray, send a message up to God universe, call on your angels, your friends in high places. It never fails to surprise me how many of my clients when we first start working together, I'm like, did you, did you ask your guardian angel for help? Did you call on them? Like, oh, I didn't think about my angel or I didn't want to bother them. Your angels love to help. Call on your angels for assistance and you'll find earth angels that act on behalf of them as well. People who show up at the right time. But here's the thing, as a human being, you have free will. So angels and God universe can't interfere unless you ask for the help. 
So it doesn't have to be a formal prayer. If you have one you use, that's great. I have many that I go to. My favorites are St. Jude's Novena. Um, and then I also, I do, I go back to the Hail Mary. I go back to simple things like may God go before me and show me the way. May angels watch and protect me throughout the day. It could be a simple a affirmation. Um, it could, let's see, I was looking at one that I had written on my desk, but I, I don't think that's the one to share. The one to share is, um, oh, now it blinked. It'll come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> but there are many affirmations out there, right? Or there are many prayers that you can say. But what that does is it gives your mind a focus, a drishti as the yogis call it, something to hone in on. So you pause, which means just getting in touch with your breath. Then send up that prayer, ask for help, ask for guidance. What do I do next? Then the planning part, divine inspiration starts to flow in. So this is where it's tricky, right? Because when life happens and it comes undone, there's this desire of, I've got to find the solution. What do I do? What do I do? Where do I go? Where do I go? What, what can I do? What can I do? And our energy spins up. That's why, click on the link around the video to get the meditation. It's going to ground you. It's going to bring you back into the moment. So instead of being in that state of high anxiety, solutions start to appear. And that's part of the planning phase. So in the planning phase, what you're really doing is you're listening for those moments of divine inspiration and you're doing something mundane, right? Anything you feel called to, but it doesn't require much brain activity. It's just keeping your mind busy. Maybe it's cleaning the kitchen. Maybe it's doing the lawn, cleaning the bathroom, you know, filing papers, something that doesn't trigger big emotions but it's just something again with movement. So the emotions can have a channel. You're not just sitting and stewing with it. Then you'll find those little inklings, they pop up, that's the final P, proceed. No matter how silly or trivial it seems, even if it's like, you know what, go get the mail from the mailbox. <laughs> You're like, what? You know, it's 8 p.m. at night, I can get it tomorrow, I don't have to get it now. No, 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 go now. It's like, I just got into my jammies. No, 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 go get it now. <laughs> especially if this guidance comes three times and it's not based in fear, but it's just nice, calm message. It's consistent. It doesn't change and say, oh, check your email or oh, check your voicemail. No, it's check the mailbox. Follow through with it. And maybe you go out to your mailbox and you run into your neighbor and your neighbor says, oh, you know what? I just heard of this job opening down the street. You know, would you be interested? I hadn't thought of you, but I saw you out here and then I thought, oh, I should, I should make the offer. Who knows, right? No matter how trivial, but you start taking those actions on those little inklings and the domino effect starts to happen. So these four Ps, when everything seems to just come unraveled, take that moment to pause. Don't go into major action or make any choices or decisions, but move with your breath in that pause, the walk or the shower. Then pray, send up a request. It could be as simple as help. Your angels, God universe knows what you need. You need to ask though. And then I encourage you plan. And what I mean by plan is really be open to the plans and the insights that are coming your way and then proceed. Take action on those little inklings, no matter how small. And what you'll discover is through that, really through your faith that your prayers have been heard, things begin to shift and they begin to change. And, you know, as I was putting together the copy for this, you know, I, I choose my words very mindfully and intentionally because we all go through different things in our life and, and no one can fully understand even, you know, they say, oh, walk in, or, uh, you know, need to walk in my shoes kind of thing. But each unique spirit has come here with their own mission and calling and they have different life experiences. And the best thing that we can do for our friends and loved ones too is to be that light of hope in their lives, to be a friend who simply listens or who offers love, simply there. We're not trying to fix it. We're not trying to change it. If we can, if we get that inkling to do it, fantastic. But there's so much power from simply sitting with a person and witnessing their journey. So wherever you are in your life's journey, know that I am sending so much love to you I know this is a challenging time for so many people, so call on your friends in high places. Call on your friends, have that anchor that connects you to hope, and know that that bright light, those moments of inspiration, those whispers of hope, 
they come through, they shine through, and it's up to you to be open to see them and receive them. All right, thank you so much for watching with me and joining, and Cindy, hello, so glad that you could make it live. Let's continue this conversation. Click on the link around the video. Make sure you like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on an Inklings. And if this has helped you, please share it with a friend. All right, lots of love and I'll see you next week. Bye guys.